Hi, I'm Peter Vysotsky, a general surgeon. I'll present to you the Karadakis flap and how I do it. This is a procedure I learned from John Anderson, a colorectal surgeon at the Glasgow Royal Infirmary um, back in 2005. Karadakis described an elliptical excision which is off center. It is asymmetrical. The mid line aspect of it is almost vertical and the lateral component is on an angle. Initially Karadakis raised a full thickness flap but this was subsequently modified to be a one centimeter thick flap which um, again Karadakis originally only closed with uh, one layer deep and skin but subsequently is modified that to two layers deep and the skin. John Anderson further modified the caudal aspect of this. Originally the ellipse was based on an axis which is two centimeters lateral to the midline to the side of the secondary fistula. Anderson modified this in that the caudal end is three centimeters from midline and that is to uh, prevent the scar angling towards the anal verge. As I mentioned previously, uh, on the medial aspect the incision is vertical and the lateral aspect is 45 degrees. A flap is raised which is one centimeter thick and two centimeters deep. It is then closed in two layers. So diagrammatically there's the midline, there's the new midline two centimeters away and the ellipse, I'm not quite sure how to move this but it should be three centimeters. Um, this is a very angled image um, which distorts um, the amount of excision, certainly not. So there's the excision, this side's vertical, this side's at 45 degrees, the flap is raised, secured in two layers, one is the first layer is from the apex of the flap to the new midline the second layer is the free edge of the flap and then a subcuticular closure with the dressing. So the superior and inferior extent of the midline disease is marked. The new midline is marked two centimeters to the side of the secondary fistula. The, the medial extent of the disease is about five millimeters from the midline. A symmetrical flap is then drawn, which is approximately five centimeters across. The amount of tissue excised is marked. And this caudal aspect is moved one extra centimeter across. Any nearby secondary fistulae are excised, but distant ones are left in situ as these will self heal given that the hair will self-exit. Medially, the, in the excision has a vertical edge. Bleeding is stopped with pressure rather than diathermy. He is illustrating the vertical component, oh, sorry, the vertical excision on the medial aspect.
hospital wood forceps are used to elevate the area to be and the tissue to be excised and this is the incision that's important to be angled at 45 degrees leaving as much fat as possible behind and excising just deep to the sinus um, cavity. This is the excised tissue. The excision is done with a scalpel so that um, the surgeon can recognize if the cyst cavity is being entered and the margin adjusted accordingly. The flap is then raised. The surgeon needs to make sure that this is uh, horizontal and smooth, one centimeter or so thick and two centimeters deep. The flap is free. The first layer of sutures is from the apex of the flap across to the new midline. Uh, John Anderson does this um, in a horizontal fashion. Uh, I place my sutures um, in a vertical fashion. These are put on artery clips and tied at the end. I do not place a drain. The sutures are then tied. Prior to this step, the wound would be irrigated and 40 to 60 millilitres of 0.2% ropivacaine, uh, local anaesthetic, is injected. The second layer attaches the free edge of the flap across to the other side. The superior and inferior apices are tied, as are all the other sutures, and then the subcuticular closure, followed by a hydrocolloid dressing. The patient is discharged uh, on the day of surgery and followed up in clinic two to four weeks later. I do, not, I do not place a drain. John Anderson would typically remove this in recovery. In the literature there are various modifications to this technique. The surgeon needs to avoid a scar moving across the midline so therefore the excision should be elliptical. To my eye this demonstrates perhaps four or five deep sutures. I'm not sure if that is enough to occlude the dead space. And in this photograph the surgeon has left minimal fat on the lateral margin to again fill that dead space, potentially contributing to a hematoma or seroma. So in my series 199 keratarchus flaps over 11 years median age of 26 years with um, three or so years of symptoms, mostly males. One third of patients had a previous incision and drainage and 13% had a free previous excision. There's a distribution of uh, occupations, building trade students and unemployed forming the majority. 50% of pa patients were non-smokers with a body mass index that probably represents the population. Most patients had um, between one and three midline sinuses and the secondary fistula was more often on the left or bilateral. But the majority of patients would be ASA 1 and 2 as is expected um, and hair was found histologically in 86% of the specimens. Median length of stay was zero days. Um, 15% of patients needed to attend outpatients more than once. Um, at first outpatients review, which was median three weeks, um, three quarters of the wounds had healed. Um, 
and there were five reoperations for wound complications such as an abscess or placement of a vac and um, in this period of time four patients have undergone a redo keratarchus flap one for a recurrence possibly related to um, leaving a caudal sorry a more caudal primary sinus um, two patients had not healed up to three months and therefore underwent revision and one patient was actually found to have a fistula in ano. Very briefly, the learning curve is somewhere between 20 and 40 operations depending on uh, the frequency with which the operation is performed. So what I've called the Caridarchus 4 flap and this is because Caridarchus has made um, two modifications and um, Paul Kitchen has made one modification and then John Anderson so this is the Caridarchus 4. Um, this operation avoids the potentially inconsistent scar uh, lateralization that may occur with a bascom lift. The caudal scar does, aspect of the scar does not point towards the anus. Certainly it's widely published. Um, a number of studies will suggest it's cosmetically preferable to the Limburg flap, has a short learning curve, high primary wound healing rate which is repeatable um, and has a low recurrence rate.